Hey, this is Todd Rogers, the king of video games, and you're watching Coin Op TV. Brand new book, Hot Off the Press, Volume 2. Walter, how are you? I'm doing good. Well, thanks for being here. And uh, boy, isn't this amazing? I don't know if you, you realize this or not, but this book took nine years to do since the first edition. This is now the second edition. And in that interim period between the first edition and the second edition, the gaming industry has expanded so much that we had to split the world record book up into three companion volumes. So this is the first of the three companion volumes. This is the arcade edition. This is the arcade volume, as it says on the cover. And it has only arcade scores, 760 pages of arcade stories, or arcade scores, and stories about the champions who own the records. All right, so in addition to the book, you're, uh, and being on CoinOp TV, uh, you're a bit of a celebrity these days, popping in some movies. Can you tell me about what it's like being out there uh, in the media? Twin Galaxies right now is in three documentaries that are currently being aired to the public. A fourth documentary is about to come out soon that's being done by another company called Cohesion Productions and that's about their history, gaming, uh, like modern first person shooters, but they have a section on Twin Galaxies and me in it. And the reason they do that is because they recognize that our organization and the stuff we did back in the early days is being recognized as the pioneering like birth cradle of organized video game playing. So that's how come we ended up in that, that movie too. So four documentaries are going to be circulating by the time the summer's over, I think. Did you have any comments on being in those movies, your experience? Certainly. Well, The King of Kong uh, chronicles the, the game Donkey Kong, which uh, you have two players, which was Steve Weeb and uh, Billy Mitchell vying for the, the championship, and Billy is the current champion, and Steve being the contender, is still a contender, uh, which, are, which are both really, really uh, ex exceptional players. And the game pretty much, revol I mean, the movie pretty much revolves around them two competing against each other, where uh, the Chasing Ghosts movie uh, focuses on gamers of yesteryear, a collective of maybe, you know, 10 or 15 gamers, and following what they're doing nowadays as adults and reflecting back on what they did yesteryear uh, as being champions. King of Kong is quite a really interesting experience because it, it features a controversy between two Donkey Kong players, Billy Mitchell and Steve Wiebe, with Walter Day, the referee, caught in the middle between them trying to figure out what in the world is going on. At the same time, there's lots of controversy that's resulting from how the movie's been edited and whether or not this is portrayed correctly or whether that's portrayed correctly. I have lots of opinions on what's portrayed correctly and what's not portrayed correctly, but I'm planning on going and seeing the movie again before I have in-depth in-depth statements to the media because I really need to know for sure what I do truly know is in the movie or what I think has changed in the movie or what I think is good in the movie what I think is bad in the movie but I am aware that it's a phenomenon that's becoming very big maybe as big as Super Size Me the very successful documentary because it seems to hit a nerve people are fascinated by this uh, competition between Billy Mitchell and Steve Weeb and they're flocking to the movie and so it could turn into a very big thing Tell me your reaction when you saw The King of Kong well, I mean, I, I was involved in the, the filming itself, obviously, since I'm in the movie, and I got to see firsthand what went on, what questions were asked, the people that they interviewed. When I went to go see it at the Florida Film Festival, I was sort of shocked because the, the footage I saw was like, wait a minute, that didn't happen exactly like that. And then as time went on, and there was so much, so many different things that happened, I was like, wait, you know, after watching from the public standpoint, watching The King of Kong, it was a great movie, great documentary. But from a player's game point, it's like, wait a minute, they, there were so many things that were, uh, I, I would say, manipulated but but selectively pieced to give yourself a good picture I mean they did a wonderful job at creating what they wanted to create you have an underdog and an overachiever and what I call the Darth Vader syndrome you have oh the evil Darth Vader and as Billy Mitchell then you have this underdog Luke Skywalker Steve Weeb and uh, you know I mean not taking any away from Steve Weeb as being a phenomenal gamer which he is but you know I mean there's just things in the movie that make you go oh, wait 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 a minute wait you know, when you're playing they show segments of him playing at his house and segments in Pompano and trying to incorporate to make it look like it's the same game, I got a problem with that. They're trying to, to legitimize something where if it was a double Donkey Kong, where you have Donkey Kong Jr. in Donkey Kong, and the gameplay is entirely different. It's not the same gameplay. Kristen here at the Intellivision booth. You're watching CoinOp TV. This is one of the most exciting things we've had here. This is great. The Intellivision, when it first came out, was going to be part of a computer system. And Mattel announced it was going to have this keyboard component, which you see here. 
Now, only 4,000 of these were made and only a few of them were sold in test markets and Mattel tried to recall all of them. So very few of them stayed in the hands of collectors. Now the beauty of this is that um, you know it's very rare, very few of them out there and none of them work. These had a digital tape deck and they've all broken except this is the first one we've ever seen that works. And it's running, it's, it's running the actual demo that originally ran in stores right now. And this is the first time at any of these shows that one of these has been here working. And we brought it here and uh, we actually auctioned it off last night. And it was sold to a uh, collector who uh, plans on actually lending it to a museum um, up in the San Francisco area so that people can actually see this thing and, and, and see, ooh, look at this, this is the original keyboard. Because this is kind of the holy grail for collectors in terms of you know, trying to get one of these. But to get one that works, this is the first time you're ever going to see it. Well, a fella you might not see his face too often because he does retro gaming radio, Mr. Shane Monroe. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Coin Up TV. Thank How you, are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. We're having a great show, as always, with the Classic Gaming Expo. Having a great time meeting all the fans. It, it's always a great time to be here. And we're back in Vegas, which, of course, is where we started here, and we love it here, and we're glad we're back here. The people needed a champion to support emulation, and there was nobody willing to step up to the plate. That's where Retro Gaming Radio was born, and I saw this as a means of meeting the people behind Classic Gaming. I wanted to meet my heroes. I wanted to meet the person that did Pitfall. I wanted to meet the person that did Dragon's Lair. And I thought, as, a, as I'm championing the cause, maybe I can meet some of these people and give pay them homage because they're responsible for more than they know.